I'm gonna show you my main mouse movements in this video and my workflow process of how I use Logic Pro. So I'm gonna have a camera overhead view here and you're gonna see how I actually use the mouse, the trackpad and the, the keyboard to get around Logic Pro. This is gonna, this is my workflow and it might not work for you. It's gonna be a personal thing and how you wanna build this over time, but I think some of it's gonna be transferable for you. This is what my general setup looks like. I have a mouse in my right hand, trackpad in my left and the keyboard here with a kind of fancy little holder. Now I got used to this workflow because a couple of years ago I broke my right hand shoulder and I could only use uh, the trackpad with uh, my left hand. And then eventually my shoulder got better and I brought the mouse back into the workflow. So this is something that works for me. You don't have to have two types of mice. Uh, one is fine. So let's go through this logic session here. And I'm gonna go through how first the general workflow of how to zoom in tracks vertically and horizontally and how I kind of navigate through logic like this. So the first kind of horizontal zoom I do a lot is holding option with my thumb and then scrolling with my mouse. So if you hold option and scroll with your mouse, you'll notice that the tracks just get fatter like this. It's I think of it like a horizontal zoom. You can scroll down all the way till they're pretty fat and then you can scroll back in all the way to their skinny. Now, in order to get the tracks like left to right, like vertical zoom, I do pinch with my uh, left hand and trackpad. It also zooms into wherever, wherever the playhead is. So if I'm over at the chorus section with the playhead and I zoom in like this with my fingers, it's just gonna zoom in horizontally. Notice you really can't see anything yet because we haven't done like a horizontal zoom as well. So I, now I can go option scroll to get in there a bit more. And if I'm too in too deep, I can pinch zoom out. And you see, you can see I'm I'm right there like that. So pinch zoom like this and scroll zoom with option and mouse hold. In context, here we go. Option scroll down, pinch zoom to go into those tracks. Let's, again, let's go over to the break here. Zoom in over here. Zoom in a bit more. And we're in pretty deep. Zoom out, option scroll zoom back to the area here. Now that's a good way to go uh, horizontally and vertically, but there is a quicker way and which I'll get into now. I, I do that way to kind of navigate throughout while I'm mixing like scroll zoom, um, play it over here, pinch zoom like this. But if I'm kind of working on a specific section, for example, if I'm working on this electric guitar here, this track, uh, I'm not gonna uh, hold option zoom in and pinch zoom like that to get in, if I know I wanna get into this electric guitar. What I'll do in that case, let me just get back out here, is I'll use the zoom tool. And to get the zoom tool uh, open quickly on your cursor, you can hold control option. And the workflow there is I'll do uh, middle finger and thumb, and then I will generate a square over whatever I wanna zoom. So I know it's this area here, I'm gonna zoom in, and I'm gonna zoom in a bit more on this area. Now I can even go, I can go as, as deep as you, as, as you would like. If I go too far deep and I want to come back out to where I was actually before, all I have to do is hold control option again and just click. And if I continue to click, it's going to bring me back out of all those zoom movements until where I was. So let me just go option scroll just so you can see the guitar. I'll go control option, zoom around and zoom in more. Again, I can go control option, two clicks, and I'm back out. So an in-context example would be, let me see if this guitar is properly timed. So I'll zoom in, put my playhead just so I can see where it is on the grid. Perhaps I wanna change what the time measurement is. If, for example, if I wanna just go to eighth notes, I can see the eighth notes bars here now. And I can see that, okay, this note on the transient is fairly in time. If I wanted to nudge it over, I could do that by clicking and actually dragging it. Or what I like to do is usually nudge it over by a tick. So I might go hold option with my thumb and then go right arrow. And that's gonna move this region over by 10 ticks at a time. And it's moving over at 10 ticks at a time because I've set it to that value. So if I right click on this track, you can see if I go down to move set nudge value to, I have an option to choose, move this region by bars, beats, division, 10 ticks and ticks. So what that means is if I chose bar and I also do option right click, that's gonna move this region over a bar at a time. 
which is helpful if you're zoomed out. So if we need to zoom back out again, we can go control option, click just to get back out. And you'll see, watch this guitar track. If I go option right, it's going to move over a bar at a time, which is helpful if you know you want to move regions over at bars or at a time or beats at a time, for example. But for me, in this case, I know specifically that I want it at 10 ticks. I usually have it at 10 ticks as default unless I'm working on something in a different signature. So these are the main tools I use to scroll in horizontally and vertically and kind of really dive deep into certain audio tracks. It also works inside the audio and MIDI editor as well. So if, for example, if I'm zoomed in on this track and working on the electric guitar again, but I press E to open up my editor, I go to the track setting and I can do zooming inside the editor as well. It's not going to affect my zoom in the session view. If I press E to drop that down, I'm still zoomed in properly here and I can do like a different zoom in here as well. So they're separate, but they do the same thing. Just before I jump into the next section here, a little quick tip I do a lot is I press enter and that just snaps the playhead back to position one. I find I do that uh, a lot because I know my song starts at position one. So if I'm working on over here and I'm super zoomed in, I'll just go control option, two clicks out, press enter, pinch zoom, scroll up. And I know I'm kind of back at this over uh, bird's eye view. Let's take an example now of working with uh, some bit of editing, mixing and plugins. And let's dive in on these harmony tracks here. So I want to zoom in to see what these are. So control option, zoom in here. And here they are over here. So I'm going to zoom in. So we want to focus on these tracks right here. Now, a couple things I do when I'm editing audio is I'll use the marquee tool, which is looks like this marquee. And I always I usually have it as my command tool. So whenever I press command, I have this tool card called marquee. And marquee is a great tool to it, it kind of works almost like a scissors, but it, it's it's like a more powerful scissors tool. For example, the marquee, whenever you have it up here with command, I can highlight certain sections and right away if I press play, flowers by the bedside. it's going to play what's in the selection of marquee. Um, I could, if I press backspace here, those tracks will be deleted. I don't want those to be deleted, so I'm going to undo that. Those are just two simple examples with marquee, but what I want to show you with marquee in this example is cleaning up um, dead space. You may have seen people, you know, highlight tracks like this get their scissor tool up and cut and click and then delete all these. There is a quicker way to do this with marquee. So if I just get my marquee tool up, I can highlight and just delete certain sections. And it's helpful to delete the space in between, uh, in this case, harmony tracks, because there's a lot of background noise that can be built up with the different audio tracks, as well as mouth clicks and this type of thing. You don't want it to have it be distracting from your lead vocal. So now that I have these tracks here, what I can do is now I can zoom in a bit more, but if I like this view, I can keep it. I'll go in a bit more. And I want to fade all these uh, regions and I want to do tight fades. Now there's a number of ways you can do this. One way is to actually hover over the top right of any of those regions. And since they're all highlighted, I can create a fade for, on all of them. So notice all the regions are faded. I can go back and take that fade off. The other way to do it is since all the regions are selected again, I can go over here and add the fade in here by double clicking and pressing a number or clicking and just pulling up on that. And now you can see there's a fade at 87. I can do that with the fade in and fade out. So when those fades are there, select this section, maybe zoom in a bit more and find where you how tight you want the fade to be and then you'll have to listen back and decide that on your own there is a fade tool that you can use as well uh, i don't really use the fade tool much because i've set it as always being able to have a fade option if i hover over the top right this is a setting that you can control in settings so if i go if i just open command comma to get my settings up here and go to editing Notice that pointer tool in track provides fade tool click zones. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You have the option here to have multiple things and you're going to have to decide which one works well for you. But I'll just show you what marquee tool click zones are since we discussed what marquee tool is. 
That means if if you're in a region, the marquee tool will just your cursor tool will just turn into a marquee tool when you're the below half of a region. So for example, on this region, if I just zoom in, notice how when I'm in the below half of any region, see cursor, watch what as I move it lower, it changes into a marquee. So I don't have to do anything with my left hand, right? It's all it's all right hand. And that's helpful. It, that can be a great workflow tool if you're if you like the ability to have a tool option without clicking at all, just by hovering over certain sections in a region. For me, I my personal preference is just to have one tool and then have my trigger be my left hand. Now let's say I'm done editing these harmonies and I want to now maybe default these all back to zero so I can remix them and maybe put them in a stack. What I would do here is do shift command D. So um, ring finger shift, thumb command, index finger D, and that's gonna put them into a summing stack. And now I can edit these at the same time with sum six. Now, sum six doesn't have any plugins on it. What I might wanna do in this case is take the plugins that I had on the track, move them over to sum six, and then default all these tracks back to zero uh, or like um, no effects. So what I can do here is I can copy the channel preset here by all these plugins. I can go option command, C, go back over to sum six, go option command V. Now all those plugins are gonna be on this, let's just call it bus, this bus track. Now I will have to change the output because this bus output was to the bus. Now I want this to be the output going to the stereo output. Now I can actually click this track, press shift to highlight all tracks, what I'm gonna do here is hold option, click the volume, it's gonna default all those volumes back to zero and click the pan, it's gonna default all the pans back there. And then I can go over here, channel, reset channel st strip. And now all these are kind of back to zero if I scroll, they're all a kind of clean audio tracks there. So now I can go and mix these harmonies in kind of from a, a beginning setting. One thing here that's useful is if you're you know starting to mix these harmonies is to use the temporary grouping that Logic gives you. So if you like click track, press shift or command, both work to group kind of temporary group tracks together uh, and, and for volume, for example. It also works for busing. If I wanted these two tracks to be bussed out to a bus send, sorry. For example, I just could create a bus down here. Let's just say terrible naming, but you'll get the idea. If I now just send a full signal, holding option and clicking, both these tracks will have those buses there. You see low harmony left, we have bus 24, and then we have low harmony right, bus 24. So that's kind of like a temporary grouping option that you can use with Logic. It's, it's really helpful to do that. The other way to do actually grouping permanently is to do it in the mixer. So if I want these two tracks to be kind of really paired together, uh, whenever a volume changes, it, I don't have to have them both highlighted. I have to put them in a grouping behind the scenes. So I would open up my mixer by pressing X, scroll over to the track that's highlighted, which is my low harmony, press this down here and add a new group. And I might call the, uh, call the group over here. Let's see, I'll name it um, harmonies. Now I can go and add any track to this group. For example, let's just, for this purpose, add all these tracks. You'll see what I mean. If I lower the mixer, and let's say I just affect one volume, and I notice I don't have any of the tracks highlighted at the same time, just one, it's going to affect all the volumes of that one. That's because we've tied the grouping back then. And it's not just volume. Notice if you go over to the group section here, and go to settings. Notice that if you change any of the automation mode, that will change on all the tracks. If you mute the tracks, they'll mute all the tracks. If you pan the tracks, so watch if I pan this one all to the right, they're all relatively gonna be panned the same amount to the right. So if I want them to be solo at the same time, you kind of get it, right? You have these different parameters here where you add to your group or not.
That's kind of what I wanted to show you in terms of my workflow. Now I'm going to stop talking for about 30 seconds and just mix this song and have this kind of view so you can just see my movements. I'll bounce back and forth with the screen, but I thought that could be helpful to you to see that. My best Holly flowers by the bedside Do the dishes in the rain